Namaskar. Namaskar. Your name? Ashwin. Ashwin. Yeah, yeah. My question is, what is truth? When you, when you take a word like truth, it has very many different meanings for different people and there's always an attempt to put order into that because depending on the culture and the background from which you come, it's going to take on a different hue, a different meaning altogether. In the context of this teaching here, the truth is synonymous with the Antaratman, the Antar Guru, Source, Soul. When you say Antaratman, then you also are speaking about the cosmic Atman which is individualized in each being. So that would be what is referred to here as the truth. It's not how it's generally understood in a moral sense, you know, truth and lies. That's not what is referred to here. It's something deeper, it's something subtle and it's that soul and the... and this truth is also independent of society, morals, cultures and all those various influences that can create what we call a conscience. This is not conscience because conscience is based on your socialization of a person who grows up in a culture where they are cannibals would not have a bad conscience if they have a little piece of human being for breakfast. <laughs> they would not have a bad conscience because it belongs to their culture. Conscience is something that is built by socialization. Whereas the truth, as I speak of it here, is something beyond all of that. So sometimes this truth might impulse you to do something which is not that social. It could even be antisocial or appear to be antisocial because generally any action you take which is impulsed by the truth will uphold society. Its aim cannot be to disintegrate society unless there is a specific need for that. So. If you as a seeker are seeking for the truth, what you are actually seeking for is to use your Viveka Buddhi, your Viveka Shakti, the ability to discern, the intelligence of discernment and discern between the loud noise of the ahankar, of the ego, the ego lie and the impulse of the truth which is actually felt as a, as a physical thing in the body. The socialization process distances you from that truth and you have to cleave your way through the ego back to the original um, state of truth action that this body uh, would undertake if it were not under such an ego influence. So if you look at societies which are so-called advanced, they're advanced because they're more advanced at fulfilling desires. You don't have sugar cane, you have chocolate and hundred kinds of chocolate. That's why they're called advanced. They're advanced at fulfilling and creating desire. So when you look at societies like that and as the ego increases, as the need to fulfill desires and the creation of desires which go hand in hand increase, so does the, 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 the experience of, of a general depression in the system increase, it goes hand in hand. So when you move back to the original state which is actually moving from that truth impulse then the joy grows in the system. So the truth is that which when surrendered to in Samarpan 
allows the body to act in a way that will lead to an increase in joy in the system. So discern, use the Viveka Buddhi, discern between the loud noise of the ego and the almost imperceptible signal of truth. Then fearlessly bend in surrender to that truth and then allow the system, the body itself, to take action based on that truth. And that would encapsulate what truth is and how one actually is, is uh, operating, you can say, with that truth impulse from moment to moment to moment. The more you stay in the truth, the more joy in the system, one to one. very beautifully explained. The uh, next thing is that the mind cannot know the truth in that sense, but as you mentioned, it can be felt in the body-mind structure, so to say. Is that the correct understanding? When you look at the consciousness that is within the system, so not if you're going into transcendental experience, because if you go into transcendental experience, then um, that has its own set of principles and its own set of, of pitfalls. But if you stay within the system, which means you're not floating out in deep meditative states or drinking a lot of alcohol or doing a lot of japa, long hours or things like that, which force the, the consciousness technically out of the system, as long as you stay within uh, the system, there is a spectrum of consciousness. So the human being is a conceptual creature. The human being appraises the world and, and, and translates what is received by the senses in the conceptual. The truth, when it is, when it is um, experienced, can be experienced conceptually, but that would be a very limited um, view of what's actually going on. Through that surrender process, the more you bend, the more this consciousness starts to expand and, and suddenly, if you expand into the transformative, which is that which is beyond the thinking, conceptual, rational, you enter a trans-rational state of consciousness, it's the occult. It is where art happens. It is where the shamans play their dance with the spirits. It's where all of that happens which the conceptual is not able to grasp. So once the consciousness expands there, suddenly you're seeing everything from an entirely different angle or viewpoint. The associations you make are much richer and multidimensional than if you're just in the conceptual sitting there and logically trying to ascertain what's going on. As an example, you look at this guy, you can think, oh, he's wearing glasses, he's about 22, he's wearing a white shirt, is he part of that sangha, or could he be, he looks like a European. That is the conceptual appraising something. But if you move into that surrender state and your consciousness starts to expand, you will suddenly see beyond that, you'll see somebody who's yearning for a, a way of the truth, somebody who is quite at peace with himself. You'll start sensing him more than just a conceptual appraisal. So as you expand the consciousness, your whole view of truth itself starts to expand. And then at one point you're in this chakra here in the pluriform state, the Agnya chakra, and then you have this experience of Trikala Drishti. This is something very real and one actually experiences it in the body. The difference is, if you're going to chase after cosmic experience, you will not have the terrestrial experience, either one or the other you also won't really be in charge of your body that much. That's why you see all these uh, people who are enlightened, semi-enlightened, partially enlightened, um, 
very floaty, but they're not in touch with what's going on in the world. They can't be because the consciousness is not sitting in the system present. So it's a choice to know the truth within the spectrum that is terrestrial and, and corporeal, or then um, a cosmic experience. So the truth is not the truth, it's many things and also multidimensional, especially in the Trikala Drishti, in the, in the Agnya Chakra, in what is the pluriform state of consciousness there, uh, the experiences of knowing things, how they were and how they're going to be. Everybody has this experience, a lot of the times they don't even know they're having it. So if you're bending in surrender to the truth and you're doing that, with a certain integrity and a sincerity as a sadhana should be undertaken and not with a utilitarian approach like, what can I get out of it? Then the worlds open up and they open up much faster than one can imagine because you're not floating out, you're actually present. So when something starts to open up, you realize it. I had a young student of mine recently describing a, an experience she had and it was a clear plop, it was like you plopped out of the conceptual and she was in the transformative and she was trying to analyze it because it was something so unusual and I said, don't try to control things. You can't control them, you just have to be and just let it happen, not even observe. And then when the consciousness sinks back into the familiar conceptual, you'll be able to grasp what happened to you conceptually. Because a transformative experience cannot in, in its wholeness be grasped by the conceptual, the conceptual is so limited. It's, it's, it's a narrow little piece of, you know, that whole spectrum, so... That would be, uh, if I understood your question correctly, you know, the various experiences of truth. But in the strictly conceptual, it is an impulse that impulses the system to take action and when one goes with it, one increases the joy and when one goes with the ego, with the ahankar, the joy in the system depletes. That's actually a simple explanation, but it is also a simple thing finally, it isn't that complex. If you take up the sadhana, you'll find out, you know, that's how it is. I'd just like to say my uh, gratitude because my guru, I mean, you are a guru to my guru. Okay. His name is uh, Tarun Pradhan. I don't know whether you know him. Tarun? Pradhan. No, I don't. He met you maybe in Rishikesh and he mm. considers you as his guru. Okay. Please send him my uh, greetings. <laughs>